Hi and welcome to Virtual Vagi. My name is Carlos and you can find me at virtual vagiblogspotcom and it's another video on the VCAP-DCA exam blueprint and today we're going to be covering objective 6 which will be perform advanced troubleshooting and we're going to use objective 6.1 configure manage and analyze vSphere logs and some of the areas here the first we need to have some knowledge on is identify fields used with the vSCSI stats and identify vCenter server log file names and location and also identify ESX log file names and locations and identify tools used to view vSphere log files. Skills and abilities in this area we need to generate vCenter server and ESX log bundles and we're also going to use VI CFG dash syslog to configure centralized login on ESX host and we're going to test the centralized login configuration we're going to configure the VMA appliance as a log host and we're also going to use VI logger to enable and disable log collection on VMA appliance and we're also going to use VI logger to configure log rotation and retention and then we can analyze log entries to obtain configuration information and analyze log entries to identify and resolve issues and we'll just have a look at the documents which I'll have available for download which will have all the links and all the, all the material used to to go through this subject. Uh, the first one is uh, identify vCenter log file names and location. I'll have them all listed here and also have the link for the KB article for it. You can have a view of all these locations and identify ESX log file names and locations. Once again I'll have the link there. And we're going to identify some tools used for to view VCU log files and you can see them there and I'll also have a link to Simon's blog. So these are the links. So they're the vCenter server log files KB and their location so you just go through those at your leisure and the ESX log files as well and you can look at all the details regarding log files there and I'm also going to have a link to Simon's, Simon Long's blog which has a lot of relevant information for this subject here and I do suggest going to the, the blog and having a look at it. So the first area we're going to look at today here is generate vCenter server log bundles and you can have a look at these links here and I'll just bring them up so this is how you collect the log files you just follow these commands here and you'll be able to produce those log bundles and to collect the vCenter server once we follow this KB article and you can actually have a look at the, the path there which will be generate vServer log bundles extended okay that's that area there and then we're going to use a VI CFG syslog to configure centralized login on an ESX host and just be aware of this note there which is um, what you need to do to configure actual an ESX host not an ESX I host so we're going to use uh, the GUI to look at both areas for this ESX I host and going over to the environment. Okay, we're at the lab now and we've got um, all the tools open that we're going to require for this part of the video. So I've already got a connection using the VMA box and I've logged in and you can see the, the server I have listed there and I have a direct connection to this host. So the first thing we're going to do is actually have a look if syslog is configured. So we just type in vicfg-syslog-i and that will come back with a result shortly and we should see that it's not configured. No remote syslog server configured and now what we need to do is actually configure this so you see the up arrow get rid of the i put s and we just type in the IP address of the host and then we just hit enter once we do that we should get a result we'll be back at the at the prompt and then we just run the vicfg syslog i to confirm that it's been set so okay that's completed so we just run the i command again and we should actually see it that it's been configured and with the port ID or port number I should say as we can see there so the server name and the port that's being used so if you need any actually further information regarding this command here we can actually look at the help will be minus h I'll just expand this now, oh, excuse me it should be um, dash dash help and we can see the various options we have with this command here so I do suggest actually going through these so you can get 
get well versed with some of these commands and now we're going to look at the GUI so we've got a connection to the host we're just going to syslog going to remote and you can see the syslog configuration there and what I'll do is I'll actually delete it and save it and we'll confirm that it's actually the correct setting so here we'll just do an I and it should be not set and because we did set it we did have a result here before so now we should actually be say no remote syslog server configured so we can see that the actual GUI way does work so we just reset it again and we should confirm that and we should get a result any second now okay then it's all configured okay with the previous section um, I forgot to mention on the document which will be available for download um, regarding this area I've got some links here and some other steps which we did go through um, so now what we're going to do is configure the VMI appliance as a log host um, and these are the steps required here we are going to use the command there which will be VI logger enable and you can see the actual the syntax that is required there and this is the command we're going to use I'll just copy that and we'll move over to our Vima box, our connection to our Vima box. I also have Win SAP ready so I can show you the file. Well, I'm also do that now. So what's going to happen is when you have this configured, the folder will be created here for every host that you have configured. So it'll be under v var log VMware and the only one at the moment is the Vima one. So you'll have a folder in there regard showing the host. So we'll hop over to our connection to the Vima box and I'll just right click and paste the command we copied earlier so you can see that it's all connected and the target server is listed and the logs which are collected and we can quickly have a look here so we just get to log VMware and I'll just refresh this view and we can see the host there and the the files which is collected at the moment that the, the they're set to zero so what I'll do is I'll just go back into the client and I'll just make some adjustments as this is a brand new machine that I built there's nothing really configured on it so I'll just add this sneak here so at least we have some information being logged so back in the back to the document and I have a link here which will highlight some of the stuff that we did here and one of the other steps that we need to do is enable and disable log collection we use the enable command here as you can see and the disable is pretty much the same I'll have, you can see the example down here so I won't run that as you can see the enable portion and as far as the VI logger to configure log rotation and retention as you can see it's part of the the variables which I did put and you can read more about it in the system guide there on page 29 to 30 and we also need to analyze the log entries to obtain configuration information and also identify and resolve issues using the the logs that we have available to us so one way we can do it is just using the command here and I just copy that as well just bear with me for a second let's go to our environment now and I just edit the command in notepad just bear with me I'll put in the relevant parameters and I'll just come back and we can enter that here Oops, and I just get rid of the, 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 the start of this command. So it's there we go, and we can see some of the results that we get from using the tail command. So that was for the host D log, and now we're going to use the messages. Okay, and you can go through those as well. Um, I personally use other tools to have a look at these logs but you can use that from there and I've got some links here which I suggest reading also look at the virtual ghetto one which there are some issues when you put ESI, ESXi in lockdown mode okay so I'd like to thank everybody once again for the information here and thank you very much for watching